Um, when Pastor Chris asked me about coming, um, he, you know what? This is like my most favorite thing in the world is to talk about my mission field over here, Woodland Heights Elementary. And we have a former student, and we have volunteers. We have one that's going to be tutoring soon. Um, and I just love it that you want to know more about your neighbor. Um, and I know a lot about you. I get invited here by kids to come to Christmas programs, plays. Today I get to speak, and I come. I never turn down an invitation to learn more about my neighbor and my community. I am on, I am on um, Midway, so I am right here in the neighborhood also. I want to tell you a little bit about Lillian Heights. I think that's important because you have embraced us as part of a mission for you, for this church. And I want you to know a little bit about us. Um, first of all, our doors are open. If you would love to come visit, I love to give tours. I love to talk about Woodland Heights Elementary. Um, if you want to, to come and see one of the programs that the children are on the stage performing, that's wonderful. Also, Andy has been in one every year when he was at Woodland Heights Elementary. Um, that's horrible. <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> um, it is a creative and exciting place for children to learn. I want you to know that. Our doors open every day with principals and teachers greeting the children, saying, come on in. This is going to be a great day for you. And, and I know Pastor Chris knows that because when he walks and we down there, we're waiting for him when he comes down there with her with a big smile on our face greeting those wonderful children. Um, the faculty and staff at my school is amazing. They really are. We, this is my 13th year there. I have very little turnover. Um, that's a good thing, to not have people who want to leave you. Um, we have, uh, if we are replacing a teacher, it's because she's retired, usually. He or, he or she has retired. They are in there for the right reasons. There are easier schools to be. There are easier schools to work at. They just, they just are. And they choose to be there. Um, over 70% of the faculty have a master's or high degree. They are constantly working on bettering themselves. 50% of them have gifted certification. They are looking for ways to better meet the children academically. They, they provide the most amazing character developing uh, program at our school. We do have an anti-bullying program that got started last year in our district. Of all the schools that were surveyed, believe it or not, the initial the initial assessment they do to see what level of issues you're having, Woodland well, Heights actually had the least out of all the elementary schools in our district, which says a lot about our faculty. When they when kids walk into the door, the expectations are up here. You're going to do the best you can. You're going to dress the part. And you're going to act the part. And and kids learn that. You know, I talk to teachers all the time about how yes, this home situation may not be ideal, and they may do this at home. But when Grandma takes them to church, they learn how to dress and act the part. They can do that at school also, and they do. We've got a number of award-winning faculty. Um, they do a District Teacher of the Year out of the last, and we have 15 schools in our district, okay? Out of the last 10 District Teachers of the Year, six of them have come from one Heights. That's not even statistically supposed to happen. That just, and we have nothing, I mean, it's an outside team that comes in to do this. The teacher of the year for this district, for, uh, for this year, for the district teacher of the year, is our teacher. It's Alicia Ebron, and she teaches a special ed class at our school. Great grant writers. I mean, last year we had over $25,000 worth of grants, funds that our teachers initiated. They do this, and, and I'll throw this out because we talk about mission and the things that, that others can do. There is a new way teachers can get materials that they need. It's called Donors Choose. And if you go on DonorsChoose.org, you can contribute to a project, a very specific project, with specific needs that that teacher has. I love that because it's not asking for money. Teachers don't get the money for this. They get specific items. If they need a set of a, a literature, um, they'll post that and they'll explain in the Donors Choose project how they need it. So that is, we're always looking for partnerships with that. Um, but you know, out of all those things they do, you know, 
you know, building themselves up, becoming a better teacher, educating themselves. The greatest thing that they provide our children is the passion and love and caring. Talk about it being a mission field for me. It's a mission field for them in every single classroom. It's a mission field whether there's high poverty, low poverty. I mean, you know, it's a mission field. Nowadays, family is not like when I grew up. When I grew up, my mother was at home. She didn't work. She, kept, she was resting. She was calm. And when we walked in the door, all, my, all her energy and attention was on me and my brothers and, my brothers and sister. And that doesn't happen anymore. That didn't even happen in my family. I have worked my whole career being a mother, too. So, you know, life has changed. Life is different. And so um, it is huge for our teachers to be that second parent. We have had great success, guys. Academically, our kids, our school court scores higher than other schools like ours in the state on standardized tests. And I will tell you, it is because of what we offer at Women Heights Elementary. In District 6, the arts program is huge. A lot of our kids have gone through the arts program, have played an instrument or have been in chorus or different programs like that. At our school, we take it a step further. We have become an arts and basic curriculum school. That's why at any given time, you can call me and say, Dr. Benjamin or Cindy, call me Cindy. Cindy, I would love to come see your program. Um, that the kids are doing, and it, within the next few weeks, there'll be one happening, because we take the arts a step further. Let me tell you what happens with that, because that's so huge of what we are, and I feel like the more that I can share about with us, about us, the more you can think of how, of how you can help us in partnerships. And we've already had this conversation over here, but listening to the flute, I said, oh my gosh, my kids would love for you to come. And she offered before I even asked her. She offered. She said, I would love to come to school and play for your children. And we are always looking for ways to increase the arts opportunity. They would love you. <laughs> Younger guitar. They would love that. They would absolutely love that. So what we do is we have made a commitment to provide the arts at a much higher level at our school than any other schools in our district. Okay? And what that involves is we bring in lots of professional opportunities. Our kids hear a children's opera. Uh, last year, the Schwamm the um, German string family came and played. They played in two schools in South Carolina. We were, we were one of them that got them. They were amazing. They're not going to be back for like eight years or something. And, and to get to have them, um, we have jazz, we have opera, we have all kinds of things that are brought in for our children. Uh, honestly, a lot of what we have that we bring in, um, it would be hard for somebody to pay to get to see some of the things that are seen. Um, we do have our students, we have about 70% poverty, but you need to know across the district, that's just increased everywhere, not just across the district. What am I saying? Across the United States, we all have higher poverty. Um, the, um, the things that, that the performances do is they get to see professional people get up on the stage and, and show what a performance is like. And a lot of times there'll be an education piece, like the Schwamm family. When they came, they performed, they performed, they performed, and then each of the family members talked a little bit about their instrument um, and get them really excited about, you know, maybe playing a string instrument at some point. Then we bring an artist that works with every grade level. Um, and usually it's a visual artist for the older one. I don't know if you've seen the big tree sculpture, the big palmetto tree sculpture outside our school. Our fifth grade actually helped with that. Uh, they've done a bench, we do glass fusing, um, they do print making. The cool stuff that we do is amazing for kids to get at an elementary school level. I have a child who gradu graduated with the Bachelor of Fine Arts from Clemson and was a gifted art through Dorman. And she said, Mama, some of the things your kids got to get to do, I didn't do until I got to Clemson. So our kids are offering tons of wonderful arts opportunities. Um, and then the student performances. Every single grade level is on the stage. Every year. Every year they're on the stage. This is a life skill, not just appreciating the music, because the, the, the programs are standards-based. They have to use their academic standards. It usually has a social studies or a science thing. They sing about it. They dance about it. They move. They dram dramatize it. And it is amazing. The kids have got to learn great skills. Those are great life skills. 
They learn the eye, you know, that making the eye contact, the voice inflection. And one way that we see it pays off is, and, and of course, I don't know if Andy can remember who the president was when he went through, but at Dawkins Middle School, we have three elementary schools that feed into Dawkins. We're one of them. We're the smallest one. <laughs> More times than not, the student council president in eighth grade will be from Moreland Heights, not Anderson Mill, and not Westview, which are amazing schools. But I think it's I think in part it's because our children learn how to speak, they learn how to present themselves, and they have to be able to give a speech. So just good, good, good life skills. Um, but what we think is the most powerful thing, and this is where you might want to listen to, is we like to bring the arts right into the classroom. Social studies is hard. Um, we were talking <laughs> talking about how Jimmy picked up the socials book and he read from front to cover when he was in fourth grade. Most kids don't do that. They don't connect with history. So the teachers find creative ways to, to bring up the, you know, to bring the kids up and dramatize a historical event. Or they'll, they'll sing songs about it for them to remember it. And I will tell you, that is where it's paying off. Not, not just for the tests they have to take at the end of the year. I mean, we love for them to make good scores, that's great, but we really want it to be lasting so that it, it is something that they'll remember forever. Um, one thing I like to use when I talk about the arts is how did you learn your ABCs? Did you learn to sing it? I don't know about you, but I can't open a phone book without, and I still use a phone book when nobody else uses a phone book. But I opened up the phone book, and I can't, I can't say the ABCs. I have to come home and then sing them. We won't ever forget it because they're to music. I had a dad the other day, last year actually, um, come up to me in Office Depot, believe it or not, and said, you know, Dr. Bridgen, you talk so much about how powerful music is. He said, um, I know you probably don't believe this, but I can sing the 50 nifty. It's the 50 United States song. And I said, oh, really? And he said, well, he sang the whole song right there. <laughs> I mean, the whole song, and I'm like, this is good. <laughs> But guess what? He did not mess up. And I said, when's the last time you sang that? At Woodland Heights Elementary. Now, he's not near as old as I am, but by golly, does that not show you the power of music? Go into a nursing home with senior citizens, and I'm going to be there before I go. You know what? They don't remember the name of their child, but boy, they know the lyrics to a lot of familiar tunes. Or you start playing it, and it evokes emotion. Because music is that powerful. Uh, we were so excited because this year, and, and we, we work hard, always trying to find money for different kinds of things that we can provide students. Three years ago, when, they, when the district decided to redo the annex, I don't know if you know about this. Some of you may use uh, the annex. We've got a couple senior citizen groups that use the, the, the separate part, the gym, that part. And uh, there's this huge classroom, and you probably haven't even come since they've done this. Huge classroom, and I said, Dr. Owens, is there any way we could turn that into a dance studio? And the initial thing was, mm, you know, Cindy, we're already spending a million and a 1.3 million in that building. He says, I just don't know if we can work out more for the wooden floor. And I said, well, will you just think about it? Because we have had this focus for the arts now and been building on it since 2005. And you know what? He said, yes. And so we got this dance studio. Now, no dance teacher. So we had to use people who in the community or some of the local colleges to volunteer their time. But this year, we wrote what's called a Distinguished Artist uh, Project grant, and we got $20,000 for a part-time dance teacher. So now we have a part-time dance teacher, and she is amazing. Her name is Rebecca Lee. I don't know who would, who would know her. But I will tell you, when I can get fifth grade boys to go down, and love it, then I'm good. And they did. They loved it. So I knew from then on, we, from the other grades, that we would be doing right. We have gotten a lot of awards. Uh, we've got National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. We got Palmetto's Finest in 2010. That's the top two, top, top two schools in South Carolina. Um, and we got, and, and then that same year, believe it or not, we got, we were a Title I school, which is great because they're federal funds if, if you're a Title I school. We got the top two Title I schools out of 514 for closing the achievement gap. Now, we're not a Title I school anymore. I think our performance is just so high, and we rank up with schools that are not Title I schools, even though our 